I think it's uh, I think it's uh, it is a miracle. One year ago tonight, a miracle on the St. John's River. 737 with more than 100 people on board overshot the runway as at NAS Jackson came to a stop in the water. Passengers were injured. Pets died on a night that many will never forget. I was sitting right here when it all happened. On your sides, Alex Ositis reports tonight. As the flight approached Jacksonville, uh, it was in the stormy weather. Flight crew made several changes to its plan including the runway. Everybody looks better. And, uh, and then when I get closer, I see how it is. And they failed to stop before they ran out of runway. How many boats do we have in the water? Miami Air 293, a jetliner with 143 souls on board, taking on water in the dark. This had the potential to be a mass casualty event. But no human life was lost. Galen Bauer is a board certified aviation lawyer with Jacksonville law firm Spore Dodd which represents 20 of the flight's passengers. Many were military members, government employees, or the dependents traveling from Guantanamo Bay to Jacksonville. Many of them still have physical scars from hitting their head on the seat back in front of them. Initial reports from the National Transportation Safety Board show the plane's speed and descent upon approach into NAS Jacks. In the days that followed the crash, the On Your Side team interviewed aviation experts who thought that the plane was coming in too fast. This could have been avoided with better planning uh, from the crew. The runway pilots chose to land Miami Air 293 on partially closed, cutting off roughly 1,700 feet. Analysis of Boeing 737 data indicates there was enough space to land, but some pilots questioned whether it was a good idea to even try, given the wet conditions. One of the plane's two reverse thrusters was also inoperable, according to maintenance records, and a delay in Cuba for the air conditioning issue put Flight 293 hours behind schedule. The On Your Side team reached out to Miami Air International but did not receive a response. The identities of the pilots remain closely guarded and a manifest has not been made public. The NTSB did not reply to our requests for updates on the case, but initially said its investigation would take around 18 months. For whatever reason, Miami Air does not want these facts to come into the public light. Bauer says it's frustrating. In March of this year, Miami Air filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, meaning what damages passengers endured may never be paid. In part two of Miracle on the St. John's one year later, we explore what's next for passengers and investigators as they continue their work. Reporting, Alex Ositis, First Coast News, on your side.